Part 2 of the Water 7 Arc Review, Episodes 235 to 240. Usopp wakes up from his beating from the Frankie brothers, and Luffy tactlessly drops the bomb. The Going Merry can't be fixed, and they're getting a new ship. Usopp refuses to accept this, and begins an argument that escalates to physical violence. Usopp sees Merry as a living crewmate, and is offended that Luffy would just get rid of someone who's no longer useful to him. Of course, Usopp also sees this as a reflection of how Luffy feels about him. So Usopp decides to quit the crew and challenge Luffy to a one-on-one -on -one duel for the ownership of Mary. Usopp knows all of Luffy's weak points, so he actually holds his own for a little while. Luffy does eventually beat him, but he gives Usopp the ownership of Mary because he doesn't need it anymore. So I guess Usopp is no longer in the crew. Well, it's been fun watching and analyzing One Piece, but I guess I'm done. See ya! Just kidding. The town is all abuzz because someone attempted to kill Iceberg last night by shooting him five times. Nami and Luffy go to Iceberg's house to gather information, while Chopper and Sanji go out to look for Robin, who's still missing. Frankie, meanwhile, returns to his house and discovers this all in shambles and swears revenge against the Mugiwara crew. News begins to circulate that the Aqua Laguna is coming, which means the entire city of Water 7 will be underwater. It'll come around midnight, so you ought to catch the sea train out of there. Unfortunately, news is also circulating that the person who shot Iceberg was Robin, which implicates the Mugiwara crew. Nami and Luffy go outside of Iceberg's house to get the truth, but then Frankie appears. He can breathe fire, and he's a cyborg, and he's eccentric. Luffy and Frankie begin fighting. The Galley La employees emerge from Iceberg's house to break up the fight, and also to take care of Luffy, since he's guilty for the actions of his crew. Luffy has to escape, but the Galley La employees actually have the upper hand. Frankie makes a supersonic air blast, which causes enough commotion for Luffy and Nami to escape. Luffy breaks into Iceberg's house, successfully making himself look like a crazed murderer. Iceberg confirms that yes, it was Robin who shot him, and he demands to speak to her, but Luffy still doesn't know where she is. Iceberg condemns Luffy and his crew, and Luffy escapes. Chimney and her grandmother, Kokoro, escape to Water 7 and have a chat with Frankie while he's refueling on Cola. They suspect it's the secret organization called CP9 that actually shot Iceberg. Apparently, Iceberg must have this thing that was once owned by Tom. Iceberg is the only living disciple of Tom, so he must have this thing that CP9 is looking for. Meanwhile, the various crew members are on the run. But, as usual, no one knows about Sanji or Chopper, so they're fine. They're worried about Usopp not knowing about the flooding, so they head to the Going Merry. And they just so happen to have a really loud conversation right where Usopp can hear it regarding the flooding. They run away and begin to wander around the town, looking for Robin still, when Chopper suddenly catches her scent. At long last, they found her! But she says they're parting ways, and they don't need to know why, and she's sorry for laying the blame on them. Goodbye. That's where it ends. All in all, what? In the past six episodes, we've lost three crew members. Mary, Usopp, and Robin. What is the deal with that? There's too much stress, and it's hard to watch. The rare comedy injected in the last few episodes felt stilted and forced. We're already going to a dark place, and we don't have a solidly identified villain yet. I don't think this darkness is Usopp's fault, though. We all love Luffy for the blunt, black-and-white way he sees the world. It's tremendously refreshing to hear someone get right to the point of things. But when Luffy told Usopp about the problems with the Going Merry, his bluntness worked against him this time around. I believe Luffy may have been the instigator of this fight subconsciously, while Usopp was the reactor. If the news had come to Usopp from a more delicate place, perhaps the argument would not have escalated so drastically. I've never kept it a secret that Usopp is my favorite character, and although he did have some valid points, I felt like he took the situation too personally. I understand where he's coming from that he's not as remarkable as the rest of them. Even his goal makes him different from the rest of them, because it doesn't have a measurable outcome that can be dubbed complete. When the world dubs Luffy Pirate King, then his goal is complete. When Sanji finds all blue, then his goal is complete. When Nami finishes her map, 
then her goal is complete, and so on. Usopp's goal is to become a great warrior of the sea, which is a goal that doesn't have an end point. He suffers because it's his determination alone that defines his goal. So Usopp doesn't fit on the crew. At least he feels this way. Because he's not as strong as Luffy or Zoro, and he doesn't have a specific job, he needed a way to justify his presence on board. The Going Merry itself, and his ability to maintain it, was his justification for being there. But if they get rid of the Going Merry, and they recruit a new carpenter, then Usopp can't really see where he'll fit. Maybe the fight was not so much about losing the Going Merry as it was Usopp losing his place. The fight itself. I was horrified. I think Luffy tried to go all out, but subconsciously pulled his punches. But it was all out of mercy rather than sympathy. I think even the gum gum bullet to the chest was an act of mercy. I believe Luffy didn't initially fight back because he thought that Usopp might realize that he's strong and powerful and useful and decide to end the fight. Once it became apparent that Usopp was not going to change his mind, that's when Luffy decided that he couldn't change his mind either. <sighs> And the very end was beautifully animated and directed when Luffy returns to his crewmates in tears. He says so simply to his crewmates, Omoi, which can't really be directly translated. He's only saying that something which can be implied by the situation is heavy. We can conclude that what he had to do to Usopp was too heavy a burden for him. Luffy's fairly new at this captain thing, and we can tell by his nature that he did not anticipate having to have an encounter like this. He wanted fun and adventure, and this type of conflict was not on his radar. It was too heavy. Zoro, who was mostly silent during the fight, simply responds, Soryo Captain Daro, which basically means that's what a captain has to do, I guess. When Zoro chooses, he can be an excellent first mate. It's not even clear if Zoro knows this is his job, but it certainly comes naturally. He tells Luffy not to falter, because if he can't handle it as captain, then what's the crew supposed to do? And finally, Sanji did something really interesting too, when he discouraged Chopper from tending to Usopp's wounds after the fight was complete. He could recognize that it would hurt Usopp's pride, and the pain that would come to his pride would be more difficult to bear than the physical pain he was enduring from the battle. I thought that was really interesting, and it just, the entire fight showed a lot of personality from the entire crew and how they felt about what they were witnessing. Okay, believe it or not, but some other shit actually happened besides this Luffy and Usopp fight in these past six episodes. Luffy also had a fight with Frankie, who is bizarre, right? I'm gonna hold off on talking about Frankie for now until we know more about him, because I anticipate we'll get a flashback pretty soon. But I like how they stressed that Luffy's reason for fighting Frankie had nothing to do with the money. It was all about what he did to Usopp. And all this is after Usopp has already decided to leave the crew and the whole fight happened. That was a very telling thing about Luffy and I'm glad it was brought up. Despite the harsh words that were exchanged and Usopp's physical removal from the crew, I believe he's still emotionally part of Luffy's Nakama. And I should probably talk about Robin too, shouldn't I? I mean, obviously she did not choose to do this. I was convinced that Iceberg was evil and that he was making it up, but the show pretty much confirmed that he, everything he said was true. I believe that she was present for the shooting, but the masked guy pulled the trigger. Who and what is CP9? Whoever they are, I'm positive Robin did not choose to do this. I'm certain that they not only forced her to do this now, but might have something to do with what she's done in the past as well. Water 7 is going underwater by midnight, so we'll probably have to take this fight elsewhere. Unless this shit's all gonna hit the fan in the next couple of hours, but that's too much! Galley Law is out for blood, so I imagine there's gonna be some fights in the near future. I knew they'd end up being the bad guys. Even though they're more like the misunderstanding-induced third faction guys like Koza and Wiper. Awards time! I'll honorably mention Mr. Iceberg for getting shot five times and surviving, even though he did 
kind of lose his temper at the end there. But I can't blame him for that because if I was in his situation, I'd be pretty pissed too. Best pair is Sanji and Chopper for warning Usopp and finding Robin. All while being completely disconnected from the plot, I think I'm gonna coin a term called bishoping. That's whenever Sanji's wandering in the background and no one notices until he fixes everything. The boss was Sanji when he defended Usopp by kicking Luffy in the face. Like a boss. The best burn was all the various times people accused Luffy for being behind the attempted murder of Iceberg. The WTF was Frankie's dance. And I never noticed that he has three separate chins. The best lull was the way Sanji and Chopper went about warning Usopp about the Aqua Laguna. The oh snap was when Usopp was disgusted with Luffy's decision to get rid of the Going Merry and he said, So you'll leave behind weak Nakama who aren't of any use, so just leave me behind as well. The tearjerker is too hard to choose. The Usopp flashbacks would be an obvious choice. But I was more moved by Luffy's tears and his statement of omoi. Oh the best injury was a toss-up between the painful fiery explosion and the gum gum bullet to the chest. The best fight? I mean, I didn't enjoy it, but if you look at stakes and excitement and emotional investment, then obviously it would be the Luffy versus Usopp fight. The best attack was the supersonic coup de vent. Awesome. And I really, I have a difficult time deciding the MVP because everything was really difficult and disconnected in this bit of episodes. I'll go for the combined efforts of Sanji and Chopper. That's all for part two. If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to shorten my summaries to leave more space for analysis. So naturally, I'm bound to leave out a few things here and there. Let me know if you prefer it this way or the way I was doing it before. Next, I get to watch episodes 241 and 242. And hopefully we won't get another obnoxious seven minute recap. I mean, maybe I'd need that if I wasn't watching the episodes back to back. Why don't they tailor everything to my needs? See you next time. Bye. And all this is a, 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 all this is what? I've never kept it a secret that Usopp is my favorite character and but when Luffy told Usopp about the problem with going merry, Iceberg confirms that yes, it was Robin who shot him, and <laughs> I forget. Luffy eventually beats Usopp, but he gives Usopp... I believe Luffy initially didn't fight back because he thought that Usopp would realize 